Hello everyone, my name is Tom Holton Harrop and I'm a software development manager working at Amazon helping contribute to Open3D Engine. This talk is about designing the O3D editor camera. Thank you very much for joining us and if you'd like to follow me, uh, my Twitter handle is just there at the bottom left of the slide. So let's begin with the outline. We'd first like to talk a little bit about why we decided to do this work. Uh, what were some of the reasons really prompting us to re-look at the editor camera? I'd then like to talk a little bit about how we went about implementing the feature, uh, some of the approaches that we took, and finally, what we ended up with. Uh, along the way, I'm going to talk a little bit about what went well and some of the things that we might do differently next time. So to understand the why, we first need to talk about the existing camera that we started with. We had quite a lot of problems dealing with the camera. Primarily, the first reason was unreliable behavior, where users would attempt to interact with the camera and not always get the results they expected. This became very difficult to debug and difficult for us to improve and change. The next issue relating to wanting to improve unreliable behavior was maintenance. Because the code was structured in such a way, it made it very difficult to make changes without risk of breaking something. So maintenance became almost impossible. And also we wanted to try and bring a consistency across cameras within O3DE. The editor camera was very specialized for the viewport and we were not able to move this to different viewports, which meant cameras behave slightly differently depending on what viewport you were in. So by trying to consolidate our cameras, we could use them across multiple viewports and get a consistent experience. So let's talk a little bit about unreliable behavior. Uh, this was really down to bug prone operation uh, where users would do a particular operation and not get the result they expected. We also then just had limited functionality where the camera was quite restricted in what you could and couldn't do with it. There weren't many options for how you could customize the camera. Uh, and this was the primary point of why we wanted to improve it. So let's talk a little bit about one of these uh, unreliable behavior aspects. So first of all, when you are dealing with the editor camera, there's an orbit mode that you can enter into where you have a pivot or focus point and a focus distance that the camera is looking at. And so by using the, I think this is usually entered into by holding Alt in, in most editors, this is the way it worked before in O3DE, uh, you would hold Alt and then use the left mouse button to orbit about that point. You could then change your focus distance between that point and the camera to zoom in on it and, and move further away. One issue with the old camera is as the camera would move towards that orbit point, when the distance got to be very small, uh, we, there was then not a sensible way for the camera to behave. And what would end up happening is moving further forward would then actually start moving that orbit point. This would mean if you then went to move, zoom out again and increase the focus distance, the focal point wouldn't be where you expected it to be. And it would, could lead to a very disorientating, confusing behavior that we wanted to remove. Talking about maintenance, all of the viewport camera logic for the editor was existing in a single file uh, with just lots of interleaved unrelated logic. There was no single camera object that we could go to and look at to inspect and try and change the behavior of. It was very much mixed in with everything else. There were also no tests, so it was difficult to know if we were breaking behavior while working on it. And there was just lots of legacy code mixed in there, lots of variables and data that wasn't even called anymore, but it was difficult to know what was relevant and what wasn't. So looking at this, this is just a snippet taken from the old camera. So here we can see quite a number of variables relating to camera state. Lots of these actually might be things that shouldn't be, uh, they are essentially mutually exclusive. You shouldn't be able to be in more than one of these at once, but due to how we've structured this, this is very much possible and could easily happen. We also are tracking mouse, mouse position and previous position, and this is something that we really want to do centrally and not have to keep in multiple places. And then we can see more camera state mixed in here. If we go to the next slide, there's even then more examples. I think this actually was something like 120 lines later, we get some more camera state along with other variables. And the ones we can see at the top here, they aren't actually used at all. So it was a bit very difficult to try and really get our heads around what the camera is doing and what was relevant or not. Here's another snippet of some of the actual code that we were dealing with. Uh, we see magic numbers here. Um, we're calculating mouse deltas manually in each block instead of just relying on a central place for this to happen. Uh, there's quite a lot of stuff going on here that can be simplified. And this is just a small snippet from a much larger block. So we can see these conditions are starting to already get a little complicated and trying to know what state we're in at any given time becomes really tricky. So this is another reason why we wanted to improve the overall behavior. Thinking about reusability and consistency, we were really keen to try and uh, unify the 3D viewports. 
So right now we have the main editor viewport. We also have a slightly different viewport for when you're in game mode. There's the animation editor viewport and also the material editor viewport. They all have slightly different experiences. And so we wanted to try and build a unified experience that was common throughout all of them. By doing this, we reduce the learning curve. So once you're familiar with the editor camera, the cameras and other viewports are gonna work very much the same way. So you won't get this inconsistency or a strange behavior moving from one to the other, uh, which can really impact productivity. So how do we start doing this? Initially, we decided to create a prototype to hack together a really base idea of how we wanted the camera to behave. With this prototype, we could get things working very, very quickly and iterate without needing to worry about the type of processes we would deal with while working on the code directly in O2DE. Once we had the base behavior working and had something that we were happy with, we then took all of the hacky code and rewrote things to be a much more uh, consistent experience so that we could break the behaviors into composable pieces and get a better idea for how all these individual behaviors should fit together. So we did this in the prototype, but again, made it very easy to make changes and iterate quickly. Finally, when we were happy with the way the camera behaved, we integrated it into O3DE. We needed to work within a lot of constraints in the system. Uh, there are a lot of more moving pieces with O3D, a lot more complexity. So this is an area that actually took longer than we'd anticipated and it might come back to as one of the things we'd have done differently. But I think it, it definitely allowed us to focus on the really important areas first by working in the prototype. So let's talk a bit about the prototype. This was a simple demo application uh, just with some really simple debug drawing visualizations. We were able to do very fast iteration loops. Uh, I was getting constant feedback from the designer I was working with at the time, a designer called Chris Roby. I'll, I'll get to other people I'd like to call out later. And uh, another thing that we focused on was making sure all of the values we had were completely tweakable. So I could give a build to Chris and he was able to quickly make changes and iterate on the camera behavior to find something he was happy with. The other thing that's important to note is the code was easy to throw away. Because we weren't working inside O3DE's code base, we weren't, weren't so attached to the code, and it was very easy to just get rid of things we didn't like and not feel like we were too invested in, it, in anything. So this is just a quick snippet of the demo application. It was using a really simple windowing library uh, called SDL, which some people might be familiar with, a graphics library called BGFX, and here we're using DIM GUI, which is a fantastic UI library where we can expose all the camera properties. So this is just to have a quick look at the initial version. So here we can see we've got our test scene, uh, just some simple debug drawing going on in the background. Don't worry about that. Uh, we're flying the camera around, just doing a normal free look. And then here we're double clicking to choose an orbit point. So this is something we decided we wanted to focus on early was making sure we would visualize where the orbit point was and decided to try out double clicking to pick the point that you would orbit around. We found that this was slightly disorientating because where you clicked, with the camera then rotating to that point, it would feel as though your mouse had moved because it was no longer at the center of the viewport. So in the next version, we tried mouse warp. So what this was doing is where the user would click, we would actually then move the mouse cursor to the center of the screen. So it aligned with where you'd clicked. Uh, we thought this might work quite well, but again, it was a bit of a dead end. It ended up being really disorientating and we realized that it was not gonna be a good workflow for users. So this quickly got thrown away. I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about the camera object and camera data itself. We wanted to really just strip everything down to be as simple as possible. So in this example, you can see we just have a few um, data variables that are going to exist, going to be used to create the camera behavior. So the primary one is look at, which is just the position of the camera. We have your and pitch, which we modify to change the look direction of the camera. And we also have a single float value for the focal distance, which is the value we looked at earlier between the focal point and where the camera's current look at is. The really lovely thing about this is we get a normal uh, first person look behavior if focal distance is zero. And if we give that distance a value and move us away from the look at point, we then just get a, an orbit behavior with the orbit point centered at the, the middle of the screen where the camera is looking. And actually the, the logic for then the transform of where the camera is in world space is really simple. We're just multiplying a few transforms together. And then the inverse, which we pass to a shader when we're doing our model view projection projection transform, is just the inverse of that transform. Uh, again, we're, we're calculating some stuff here that we maybe could cache if it was a performance problem. But in reality, we only really have one camera at a time. Uh, this never was a performance problem and it was pretty trivial to optimize later if we ever needed to. 
So let's look at the first version of the prototype all working. So this is, uh, we landed on a behavior where pressing Alt would shoot out a ray of where the camera is looking to pick the orbit point. This was actually much nicer so that you didn't end up having to click somewhere and then orbit about it. We would just get a consistent orbit point around the camera. So we can see this working now, being able to zoom in and out. We also experimented with changing the plane the camera would move in while you were in orbit so that you could actually move that point forward uh, by pressing W and S on the keyboard for moving forward and back. And we had pan, we had um, uh, scrolling, uh, dolly behavior where you could move to and from the orbit point with the mouse. Uh, so this has just pretty much got everything that we, we wanted. But the problem was it was all hacked together and none of the code was really anything we wanted to bring back to O3DE. So we decided to take everything that we'd done and rewrite it. We wanted to reproduce how the camera felt, but not with all of the, the hacks and shortcuts that we'd, we'd ended up adding. Uh, to get to this design, it again took a lot of iteration and exper experimentation to find the right approach. And this went through a number of, of cycles until we landed on a design we were happy with. Uh, this is what we ended up with. Uh, we introduced the concept of camera input, which would represent an individual camera behavior. This would allow us to begin and and begin and end certain camera behaviors. We would go into an, a camera behavior with an activation. We would then be able to continue in that activation while the camera was running. And then we would leave the activation with ending. It would then uh, kind of get removed. So this was a kind of nice, simple interface for how the camera behaviors would begin and end. And then all we actually wanted to deal with with incoming events was the uh, just basically handling events from the user uh, in terms of clicking in the viewport. So we have our handle events, which we would map to a particular camera input event. And then stepping the camera would just update us from where the camera currently is, take the various deltas of the, cu the cursor movement, or if we've scrolled, uh, anything like that, and then just return a new camera, which we can see it's happening here. Uh, we also had this concept of exclusive cameras. Uh, I won't get into all of that now, but it allowed us to compose different cameras together in more interesting ways. So here's just a quick example of what handle events looks like. Uh, we just have an event that comes in. We only care about a mouse button event in the case of a rotation event at this point. So we're checking to do a, essentially a, a cast of that type. We're actually using a um, variant here to do get if to check if the event is a mouse button event. And then we're just detecting if the mouse button went down or up to know if we should begin or end that particular behavior. Um, many of the other behaviors are very similar to this. We then have the update function, which again, just takes the incoming deltas. We apply those to whatever our current target camera is, and then we just return the next camera. So the, the core logic is really just modifying pitch and your here. And then we do a little bit of logic just to constrain your and pitch to keep them in a, a sensible range. So the camera system deals with these behaviors and essentially manages them. So any camera behaviors you want to run, we add all of them to, to begin with to an idle camera list. And then when you press a button to activate a particular behavior, we move that to the active camera list. So its job is just really responsible from shuffling cameras from idle to active and back again. All of the cameras in the active list are then accumulated. We run all of them one after the other, applying the changes to uh, a consecutive camera object. And then we just return that at the end of the update. So some refinements we added were when we wanted to move from our new target camera based on the input to what our current camera was, we would we actually implemented a form of interpolation or smoothing to improve the feel of the camera and give more control to the designers. This is something you can turn off if you don't want it, but it allowed us to get a better feel for how the camera would move and would rotate. It's definitely not for everyone, but we made sure to separate position and translation smoothing so you can toggle the behaviors independently. We also made sure to add lots of customization points to these internal core camera behaviors. Um, a good example, which I'll get to is, oh, I'll get to in a little bit, uh, looking at how we might set the focal point, for example, um, where we, we want to be able to specify that, but not uh, mix certain editor side or entity code in with the core camera behaviors. So this gave us a lot of flexibility there. I also want to quickly mention on this slide, uh, this is a really great article by Scott Lemberg about uh, lerp smoothing, which is a technique we actually applied to the camera, uh, which deals with frame rate independent smoothing. Uh, so definitely check that out if you're interested. Uh, another thing that we did was animation. So here is if you have a particular representation of the camera in the world and we'd like to move somewhere else, 
instead of doing an immediate snap, we will actually um, animate from one position to another. And this meant we actually needed to map from the pitch your representation of the camera to a quaternion representation that we, we could do a slurp between uh, to get a nice animated movement. Uh, this was a little bit uh, challenging to make sure that we could get the logic right for extracting the pitch and yaw. Um, and we did find a really neat way of doing this uh, with a reference to a particular paper which describes how to, how to achieve this. Let's have a quick look at those camera transitions. So here I'm flying around in the world. I leave a recording of my position and then I press a button to animate back to that point. So we're both animating our view direction and also the position. And this is something that we would like to make optional. It's on our list of things to do, but I think it definitely gives you a better sense of where you are and where you're moving to, which can help in a larger scene to not lose your bearings on where you are. So once we had that working and we had the general new design in place, we came to the O3D integration. So the first point was actually integrating with the new Atom viewport. So we were really lucky here. Uh, a lot of that legacy code we talked about at the beginning had already been extracted and ported to a legacy camera object. So that made swapping out the code much, much easier. Uh, this was down to an engineer called Nicholas Van Sickle who did an awesome job here and saved us a bunch of time. So thanks to Nick for that. We also needed to update our camera code to handle the new O3D input system so we could map from raw inputs to camera inputs. And we also had to deal with external camera events. In the prototype, we were driving all camera behaviors, but in the editor, there are other systems that might change the camera behavior. So we need to make sure we respected those and moved the camera to the right place, keeping the correct pitch and your values. We also had lots of um, things to deal with when it came to editor focus issues. So we don't, we not only have the viewport in O3DE, we also have the entity inspector and the outliner and many other panels and windows. And so depending on clicking in those will change your focus in the viewport and can lead to inconsistent camera input behaviors. Some other concerns were around input priority of what system when you click in the viewport should get the first uh, approach or the first option of dealing with a particular input. Uh, sometimes this changes depending on the context. It turns out this is incredibly complicated when we're thinking about manipulators or the difference between box select or orbit if we're doing a left click. So it took a little while to work out these and come up with a nice system. Fortunately, the input system that we were using actually had a, a way of specifying priority, which made this a lot easier. So in terms of integrating with the editor, we came up with this concept of the modular camera controller. So this is just an API that exposes all of the cameras um, properties and priorities we talked about before. This is really just a builder that creates these cameras and then manages, the, manages them internally. It manages them by itself creating a modular camera controller instance. Uh, this has a very similar interface to the one we looked at earlier, where we handle an input channel event, which is just an event coming from either the keyboard or the mouse, and then an update event, which takes a whole load of data about the deltas that we might have and also the time step, things like that. Uh, we also, in this particular bit of code, handle external changes to the camera. So if any changes to the viewport happen, we make sure to deal with them. We also handle things like roll. If you're matching the transform of an entity, we didn't want this in the core camera behavior because roll isn't something you usually want to do. Uh, but it was really helpful just to just apply that roll value if it existed on top of the camera. And we also then wrap the input and animation state inside the camera controller instance as well. So this is responsible for deciding, are we animating from one point to another or is the user driving the camera input? So what, with those, we then created what we call the edu uh, sorry, ed editor modular viewport camera composer. So what this does is use the modular viewport camera API to set up an editor specific implementation of the camera. So this contains editor specific logic, references to entities, all that kind of things, but these are all included in the callbacks that we provide. Uh, we can also provide editor specific preferences or settings so that you could have different settings for your camera per viewport if you wanted. We also make sure to handle be this camera tracking, uh, which is the option we have on one of the editor entities, which allows you to place a camera in the scene and then change the position of the entity by moving the camera. Uh, this is just a list of all of the potential editor cameras that are running. We distinguish them between the first person camera, which is really just when you're using WASD and you have the right mouse button held. And then we also have orbit behaviors, which run separately. So here you can see we, we add all of the first person cameras and then we add the orbit camera and the orbit camera has its own set of cameras that run independently. And this is, uh, this is made possible by the exclusive 
value that we looked at on one of the earlier slides. This is just a quick example of a customization point where we're getting the manipulator transform uh, for the using an editor specific bus. If we do have a selection, we can then return that point. Otherwise, we return nothing and we're not able to provide this behavior. It just won't, it will be a no op, it won't do anything. So, going back to the camera state, I wanted to talk a little bit about an, a, an improvement we made to this. So, to begin with, uh, we had a focal distance value, which was just a single float. But in getting some really valuable feedback from design technologists on the team, uh, we wanted to try and provide more flexibility about where the pivot would be. So we achieved this by using an offset, um, which was instead of a single float value, we were using a vector three. So this gives us much more control over where we can place the pivot. It just doesn't need to only be in the center of the viewport anymore. And the logic, again, looks pretty similar. We didn't have to change too many interfaces. We've changed to use AZ types here instead of the other math library we were looking at before, but it's really much the same. So the offset is applied in local, so in local space. We then have pitch and yaw, which is again our just rotations looking left to right and up and down. And then the pivot is where the camera actually is in world space. And all these combined together will give us the final camera transform. Uh, this bit of logic is really handy as well, which allows us to move the pivot point without also moving the camera position. Uh, we sometimes want to do this if you've changed selection or depending on where you've clicked, we actually need to move the pivot without also moving the camera. Uh, so it's just a little trick of how to do that. So let's look at that behavior in action. We actually decided to go back to the prototype to work on this because it was just so much uh, easier in the short term to be able to quickly try and iterate on the, the data and make sure that everything was working as we expected. So here we can see we've actually uh, holding alt and it, we're just using the sort of debug uh, primitive as the, as the orbit point. And you can see us moving it there in the viewport and changing various settings to get the behavior that we want. Uh, but this was incredibly powerful and made a huge difference to how the camera operated. By restructuring a lot of the camera behaviors, we were also then able to add tests. So this allowed us to do really low level uh, unit style tests on the actual camera input behaviors and also slightly higher level integration tests when we were dealing with the viewport and the modular viewport camera controller. We, by being able to test camera input in isolation, we could just send sample inputs that we created in the test to verify a lot of these really core behaviors without worrying about any other fixtures or trying to instantiate any other objects that were needed by the camera, which we could never have done previously. Uh, the viewport integration tests were also incredibly useful and allowed us to mimic some of the types of behaviors like responding to be this camera um, to ensure that that functionality worked consistently. So uh, let's just kind of wrap up looking at what the editor camera looks like today. So here is a, the most recent behavior. Uh, we now do a picking behavior where wherever you click in the viewport becomes that new orbit point. And as you move around and click, we'll pick whichever point you clicked to orbit the camera. So I think this has worked pretty well and we've got some really good feedback on this from our designers and users of the, the camera. Uh, I think we really wanted to focus on camera behavior because camera, the camera is something that you use for pretty much everything you do every day in the editor. It's so crucial to your experience of interacting with O3D. Um, so making sure that we had a really solid foundation to build on and improve reliably was incredibly important. So uh, let's just talk a little bit about some future improvements. We'd really like to continue just to refine the behavior. Um, there's a few things that we, we haven't yet implemented, one being animation interrupt. It would be really nice when you animate from one camera frame to another to be able to press a button and cancel out of that action if you don't want to complete it. Uh, this is sometimes really useful if you decide you don't want to go to a particular uh, location in the scene. Uh, there are a few remaining focus and input issues. Um, they're pretty minimal now, but I'm, I'm certain some are still lurking there. And so the, the sooner we get reports on those and reproduction cases, that'll be really helpful for us to make that even more robust. We'd like to make a lot of the UX settings easier to find. Right now we have them in the editor preferences, uh, but there are plans to move settings to the editor uh, title dialog, or viewport title dialog, I should say, in the top right of the viewport. Uh, there's no confirmation exactly when that will, will happen, but really great, would be great to get community input and feedback on that if someone would like to take it up. And the final thing is to actually roll this out to more viewports. This is actually, the system is now being used in the main editor viewport, and it's also being used in the animation viewport. But we haven't yet been able to uh, migrate this to material editor, which we're hoping to do uh, sometime in the future. But again, no concrete plans on exactly when that might happen. And finally, adding more tests, because tests are always good and just help ensure that we verify the behavior and any changes don't break anything that we want to maintain. So at the end of the day, was this worth it? Um, is this a valid strategy for feature development? Is building a prototype worth the effort? And I would say a resounding yes. 
Uh, by doing this, we were able to focus on the most important things and not get distracted by other issues. We really focused in on the core behavior we wanted to get right to start with. And I would definitely do this again. Uh, I think by actually taking the strategy, we got a better end result than if we hadn't used the prototype. We went through so many more iterations and were able to throw away so many more things that just didn't work that we might have otherwise wanted to hang on to um, if we'd made it in the normal production code. And I think we are definitely in a better situation, I think, with the test coverage, with the behaviors, with the ability to iterate and make changes given feedback. We're not scared to change camera now like we were before. I think there's a lot of potential for further improvements in the future. I'd like to just say a special thank you to Chris Roby, who is the primary designer who really uh, banged the drum about editor camera uh, several years ago to get this initiative off the ground. And he was invaluable in giving really useful feedback in a lot of the early prototypes and some of the versions as they made their way into O3DE. I'd also like to thank Nicholas Van Sickle, who works a lot on the Atom viewport conversion. A lot of the input priority issues were handled by Nick. Uh, he did a fantastic job there and made our lives a lot easier. The um, orbit point behavior was originally um, brought up by Star Shaw, one of our design technologists uh, at Amazon helping out on O3D. Uh, Star's feedback was really, really valuable and helped us make the jump to the much more improved behavior. And after that as well, we got some great feedback from Ben Black, another design technologist who helped us iterate on the orbit behavior, where instead of just using the manipulator transform, we actually did integrate the picking behavior, which felt a lot better. So if you're interested and would like to learn, learn more, uh, here are some of the links to the prototypes that we worked on. Uh, you can just go find these. Prog is my uh, GitHub account, um, just my, my personal one. It, it maps to my Amazon one as well, if you'd like to go and find me on either of those. So there's some readme's on how the logic is implemented, and you can have a look at how we went about implementing that. Um, and if you'd like to look at the code as it exists today in O3D, we have most of the code in camera input. And then you can also go look at modular viewport camera controller and editor modular viewport camera composer. That is all for me. Uh, thank you very much for joining. I hope this was interesting. If you do have more questions, you can definitely find me on Twitter or GitHub. Be happy to answer questions. I'm on Discord as well. Uh, my alias is Holton Hart, H-U-L-T-O-N-H-A. Um, but yeah, really happy to talk more about cameras. And again, thank you for joining.